So sometimes I try to bless you guys with the stuff that I come across that I think you might not have heard of. So like my personal experience was watching The Nightingale or, you know, the, the haunting of Sharon Tate stories that I didn't think a lot of people had experienced. But then sometimes you guys bless me. And that's what happened after I made my swiped video. So I make my swiped video, which thank you all so much for the support on that. It's been doing way better than I thought it was going to. And it's like a kind, the kind of content I'm really happy to be making. So I'm glad that it's being well received. On that video, a lot of people were commenting like, oh my God, it's like Daddy Derek 2.0. Oh my God, it's Derek Savage all over again. So, oh my God. It's like Cool Cat. And at first I was just kind of like curious to know who this person might have been, but I didn't take, put too much thought into it. But then the comments kept coming in. So eventually I was all like, okay, what? What is Cool Cat? What is Daddy Derek? Who is Derek Savage? And that is the exact moment that I became blessed by looking this up. Cause somehow I had missed all of it. To be fair though, this drama was going on in 2015 and at that point when I was on YouTube I was like very much into like gaming cut commentaries type stuff so it wasn't really the content I was watching and it wasn't the content I was making. Based on YouTube recommended, it was never hitting my radar. And if you haven't heard of Cool Cat, Derek Savage, and Daddy Derek, I'm here to bless you with that information. And move around and the Cool Cat Boogie is my favorite sound. Wow! This looks Wait! So just to ease you into this story, Cool Cat is a character that was created by Derek Savage. The movie that everybody ends up talking about is Cool Cat Saves the Kids, which is just like one drawn out, horrible children's PSA with multiple storylines, multiple purposes, and most of it just doesn't make sense. And it's just really not good at what it does. Look at me, I'm surfing the web. If I was gonna rank it as a PSA, it would be very, very low on the list. And in terms of PSAs taught to me by animals, these are the animals that I wanna take my advice from, not this. And I'm Cool Cat, and I love all kids. But besides the movie itself just being horrible, but in a funny way, Derek, the creator and director, is the kind of guy that doesn't take criticism very well, and he also doesn't understand what fair use laws are, which is just the perfect storm for me. So just to go over some of the random things from the movie, uh, obviously it's dealing with things like cyberbullying, because that's a huge issue in today's age, which is one of the main reasons why I think that Derek thought he could get all like high and mighty in the situation for people critiquing the movie, because he was just being like, I'm being cyberbullied. But at one point, the kid's like sending these horrible text messages to people, and like the kids open them. They call Okay, I just got a text, but I don't know who it is. So, see what it says. You're ugly and your hair looks like rat hair. No! And then they get another one and Cool Cat's like, well, maybe you should read it again. Maybe he apologized. Should I open it? Sure. You know, maybe they feel bad about that really mean text and now they want to apologize. And then of course he didn't apologize. It was just being mean. But the best part, is that this this bully, whose name is literally Butch the Bully, is like hiding behind the car, watching the reactions as he texts. You know the upside of cyberbullying is that you don't have to be near the person? Like that's the point. So Cool Cat's basically supposed to be this force of good advice for children, but he actually usually gives pretty horrible advice. But the whole thing is that like his, you know, Derek Savage, Daddy Derek, that's his dad, and he's the one who has some of the best advice and stuff. For some reason, up to that point, I wasn't super weirded out by the fact that He's very clearly a human. Cool cat's a furry. I didn't really put much stock into that, but then they show the mom. And I'll be ready in a couple minutes. Hey, I bet you will, you fine looking kitty cat, you. Derek, get away from the cat. I just can't imagine why anyone would, for one, include in their own movie, two, write for themselves to act that way in their own movie, and then actually put it in the children's movie. The logical thing would have been to pay for one of these obnoxious costumes for him to wear too, but Derek clearly wanted to be seen in this movie. He wanted his likeness and his personality. He wanted to be a champion character in the Cool Cat saga, which is shown up pretty extensively in this scene where they're playing music, which I think only exists so that he can show off the fact that he has a Van Halen autographed guitar. Kid! 
friendly. So either way, this movie is kind of a train wreck and I was very interested to watch it after watching a lot of the surrounding drama videos about the movie. Why he was flagging channels, why he was removing videos, why he was going on some crazy tirade. And I was actually gonna pay the $2.99 American on Amazon to watch it. Like that is, hang on one second, $2.99 USD to cat. That is $3.95 Canadian that I almost spent to watch this movie. But then I didn't because I realized how horrible Derek was and I just could not in good conscience give him money. Even though I really want a cool cat t-shirt to wear ironically, I just can't give this man any money. And Derek, before you say, oh my god, look, these videos where they're talking about my movie is actually affecting my livelihood and affecting people from paying for it, the only thing that stopped me from watching your movie and paying to watch your movie was you. Was the knowledge that I'd be putting even a minuscule amount of money in your pocket. Literally the only reason your movie would have hit most people's radars was because of the YouTube videos being made about it. And we'll actually get to that a little bit later. So the big drama that starts with Daddy Derek here is that he starts threatening to sue people for criticizing his movie, which obviously, if you saw my swipe video, is gonna be pretty reminiscent of that. Somebody just not liking the fact that their video or their movie is being critiqued in a way that they don't agree with, which you can't actually get mad at someone for. So the big thing that started this was I Hate Everything, a very large YouTube channel, and he got a copyright strike in November of 2015, which he, when he was obviously a significantly smaller channel than he is now. Obviously he's still big, still popular, but not as big as he, as he is at the time now. So he started getting copyright strikes on his videos and obviously started getting worried because if you get three strikes on YouTube, your channel gets terminated. So before he ends up getting that email, there was a little bit of a back and forth between Derek and Alex where, you know, Derek is basically saying like, you sent your, your followers to, to send hate my way, which, you know, I everything was like, no, I've never encouraged or incited anybody to do that. He literally says, now that we have your IP address from your email, we'll be able to discover who you are and where you live. So please be a man and submit your full legal name and address as this will save my legal team a few minutes of hunting it down. And yes, we will find you. What kind of threat is that? Yeah, please dox yourself so we don't have to do it first. This man was literally digging himself such a damn hole that he's lucky that somebody more serious didn't come along and really try to do something about it because I don't think it would have gone well for him. And uh, then it started getting really weird. So on top of the regular copyright stuff and the threats directly from Derek and uh, I hate everything trying to specifically deal with him, he got an email from a different director's legal counsel saying this. And let's point out specifically Byrne and Shapiro at yahoo.com. Very official. Dear I Hate Everything, our law offices represent Miss Anne Marie Friggin, the producer of Attack of the Jurassic Shark feature film. Probably another instant classic. Mr. Derek Savage contacted us and brought to our attention your two videos that use our client's copyrighted material. I personally have viewed both videos, which links are provided b below. And they are a violation of the US Copyright Code Title 17 USC, and you are infringing against my client's copyrighted intellectual property. We demand that you remove and delete both videos, keeps putting the quotation marks in videos, that contain Miss Friggin's copyrighted footage from the Attack of the Jurassic Shark feature film. If both videos are not removed within 24 hour period of, from the timestamp of this email, we are filing copyright infringement, all bold, all capital, charges against you and your channel with YouTube Inc. And we will take further actions against you in a court of law. This is your only notice. Sincerely, Joel Shapiro, Shapiro Law Firm. This kind of scared the shit out of IHE a little bit, as, as it rightfully would. But luckily, he ended up talking to uh, YMS, and YMS was kind enough to point out that this probably wasn't legit, and they ended up tracking down the actual director of the movie and the producer of the movie, and they said that they had no idea of any Shapiro law firm acting on their behalf. And the fact that Derek uses a Yahoo email and the account that contacted them using a Yahoo email made IHE and yourmoviesucks.org get a little bit curious about the situation. So after they kind of figure this out, they try to bait Derek into admitting that he probably lied about that situation. So they reach out to him being like, oh my God, Derek, like, did you actually reach out to these other people to, to talk to them about 
uh, the videos that I've been making? Like, please, can we resolve this? Can we do something just to see if he'd be like, look, man, I don't know what you're talking about in terms of the other movie, but yeah, I have a problem with what you made about my movie, but no. This is what he ends up coming back with after I Hit Everything sends that message. Alex, this is what I'll do for you. First of all, I don't want to shut you down. All I want is a simple apology. And the last thing in the world I am is a bully. I'm a businessman who wants to protect, his, to protect my brand. He's a big bully, let's get that straight. I'm going to retract the charge filed this morning as I don't want you to have two strikes because he's really maintaining that he's issued some kind of actual charge against the channel. The first one stands, as I have to protect Cool Cat, but I don't want anything additional to hit you. And I'll even contact the producers who I spoke with and really try to smooth things out there. So that is him admitting that he allegedly reached out to the other producers of the movie who openly stated that they have no idea who Shapiro Law Firm is, that they're not being represented in that way and that they weren't reached out to and don't care. He goes on to say that he's like obviously very good at smoothing things over so I'm confident that I can make it where you'll have no problem from that front. I'm assuming that'll be pretty easy considering you pulled that out of your ass, Derek. Just make a little 15 second video where you apologize and say that we worked it out and I'm a cool dude and then say cool cat loves you and of course delete those three videos. This is like Michael Scott and not getting the discount on the pizzas and then <laughs> basically asking for additional terms when he doesn't want to give up the pizza dude. Do this simple thing and you will not have any more problems from me and this whole thing can go bye bye. But then Derek makes this entire video about fair use and why he was right in this situation. And then he had to do something about the situation because parents were reaching out to him and they were, they were so upset that Cool Cat was being insulted in such a way. And my favorite thing about this is that I Hate Everything even says that he enjoyed the Cool Cat movie. It was horrible, but in a fun way. It was just one of those, then that's one of the main reasons I wanted to watch it. So he basically says that the content people are making on YouTube was going to hurt his brand and that it was gonna prevent him from making money. But then my favorite part about that was that he comments that he's had to order more DVDs and more clothing because it's selling faster than ever. Over the past week, good Lord Almighty, I have sold more Cool Cat movies than I usually do in a month and a half period. More Cool Cat t-shirts. I had to place another order because I'm just I'm selling out of everything. Oh, YouTubers making commentaries about my video and they're getting a lot of views even if they're saying mean things and my sales are going up? I wonder why! Like literally the only person fighting to kill your brand right now is you, Derek! So in that same fair use video, at one point he literally says that people need to ask permission if they want to include something in a video. So okay, I hated Jurassic Park, the hit, the lost, whatever, the kingdom, the fallen king, fallen kingdom, I hated it. I actually really hated it. They're saying that I would have to reach out to the creators of that movie if I wanted to negatively talk about it. Like, do you actually think that every film critic out there reaches to the publishing companies, the producers, the directors of every movie? before they make a review. He then tries to show a bunch of cases where like fair use laws didn't work in the favor of somebody trying to claim fair use, but they had nothing to do with this particular situation. So it was like somebody stealing an exact statue and remaking it and then selling it. And it's like, yeah, then you're, you're making money off of somebody else's fair use. They're selling the exact replica of it. And then he basically keeps talking about just including any footage from Cool Cat in a video counts as ripping it off, which that is not, what ripping something off means. Again, ripping something off is if I take something that already exists, make a little change to it, and then start selling it separately. That's called ripping something off. And he also has this fixation on talking about people being deceived by these videos as if these videos are gonna change what the source material is. I, I put it on um, private, you know, where you gotta send me because just wait till all this crap gets out till the truth gets out to you. Half the time they're just telling you exactly like what the, what the what's happening on screen and how they think it's bad. People pointing out that the movie is bad is not suddenly going to make the people that like Cool Cat hate Cool Cat. If there's parents who really enjoy Cool Cat, if there's kids that like Cool Cat, they're not watching YouTube videos about Cool Cat being bad. And it wasn't just I hate everything that he went after. He went after another YouTuber uh, named Bob Show and Josiah Clark who actually had their videos removed. And his whole thing about if people just contacted him separately, they could resolve it. There is Josiah Clark literally says, Mr. Savage, please respond to my attempts to contact you privately. Have sent two emails to coolcatlovedyou at yahoo.com. Here's an example of one of those emails. Hi, Mr. Savage, I'm following up on my previous email to you yesterday regarding your copyright takedown notice on my review of Cool Cat Saves the Kids. We've had a good history of positive communication re regarding my review in the past. And in the spirit of that, I asked to get in contact with me as soon as possible. Unless I hear back from you, I will be taking the step of filing a counterclaim to your takedown notice tomorrow evening. And here's a specific comment from Cool Cat 
on that video by Josiah. Hi Josiah, just watched the review and I'm still laughing. I thought it was cute and even though I'm being slammed a few times, it's all for good. He was positive towards the content. But yeah, ultimately, uh, Daddy Derek ended up backing down. Enough people kind of came at him, pointed out all the issues with his, uh, thoughts and wrongful opinions on what fair use is and what fair use isn't. I am just heartbroken that Derek Savage is such not a cool cat. He's just not a cool cat at all that I can't buy a cool cat shirt. There is, I just want one. So yeah, that is gonna do it for today's video. It's probably very long and rambly, but I just think that the whole situation is hilarious and I really wanted to talk about it in a video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the whole thing. I'm sure a lot of you were already very familiar with this situation, but it was actually new to me. I had somehow managed to skip and not and miss all of this back when it originally happened and I've missed any of the newer videos by people who have made it, but it's good. The SAG is great. I will have videos linked below by I Hate Everything, Your Movie Sucks, and anybody else that I thought was uh, pretty funny. Most of the information I got was from I Hate Everything because he seemed to be the person who ran into the most problem in the first place. I'm really hoping that Derek's kind of changed. It's, it's been four years. I think a person can grow. But uh, before I go, how the frick did they get Vivica Fox to be in this? <sighs> now that we're done that edit, I wonder what Derek's up to now. I'm Derek coming to you today with some really cool f awards. I smell cool cat. How can you be safe? Part two. Hey guys, thank you as always for watching the video. All my social medias are linked down below. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and we'll catch you all later.